our committee held an exchange of view on this topic with the participation of Michel Bartelet, Bachelet, United Nations High Commissioner for Human Rights, Laurent Richard, Founder and Executive Director of Forbidden Stories, and Tamar Kaldani, the Vice Chairperson of the Consultative Committee of the Council of Europe Convention for the Protection of Individuals with Regard to Automatic Processing of Personal Data. Last September in Bern, we heard from Ting Engelhardt, Human Rights Officer at the Office of the UN High Commissioner, and Lars Patrick Berg, Member of the European Parliament and of its PEGA Committee. At that meeting, I asked for the committee's authorization to hold a third hearing, and that's what we're holding today. We're finally holding a hearing with victims who were targeted with Pegasus or with similar software in order to be able to hear their stories and know, know more about what their countries are doing or not doing following the revelations of the possible abuse of such spyware by their authorities. And mind you, it's very serious for democratic countries to spy on their politicians, on their journalists, and to do so for years. It's a grave abuse of human rights when that's happening. And that's why we've invited the people who were subjected to that here to tell their stories. Our first speaker, Christoph Drescher, will share, he will share his speaking time with his lawyer, Dorota Brescher. Sorry if I, <laughs> thanks Alexander. Is a member of the Schuim, that's the lower house of the Polish Republic, and a former member of our assembly. He was targeted with Pegasus in 2019, when he was serving as campaign leader of the opposition party Civic Platform during the, the parliamentary elections. Our second speaker, Diana Riva, is a Spanish member of the European Parliament from the Esquerra Republicana de Catalunya, that's the Catalonia's Republican Left Party. She's also vice chairman, vice chairperson of the PEGA Committee in the European Parliament. She herself was directly infected with Pegasus in 2019, only three months after taking her seat in the European Parliament. She's one of the 63 Catalan victims, or at least at least 63 Catalan victims, targeted or infected with Pegasus, according to the Citizens Lab report Catalan Gate, published in April last year. Apart from her own experience as victim, I also look forward to hearing from her on the most recent developments of the ongoing inquiry by the PEGA committee. Some weeks ago, the rapporteur of the PEGA committee, Sophie Innesfeld, published her findings and a draft report. Finally, we will hear from Thanasis Koukakis, and I haven't seen him yet. He's arriving. Online. He's online. Sorry, I forgot about that. An investigative journalist from Greece specialized in financial affairs who has reported on corruption and money laundering. <clears throat> Mr. Koukakis was infected with another spyware. It's called Predator between July and September 2021. I know that Greece, Spain and Poland are well, surely not the only Council of Europe member states where Pegasus and similar spy software has been used by government agencies. There are others, and I will cover also those in my final report. Other member states may have used it, but serve as export may not have used it, but serve as export hubs for this type of spyware or facilitate its trade. I say as a Dutch member here. I'm very thankful to the three speakers for having accepted my invitation to testify before our committee. I look forward to hearing from them. Thank you. And I think we start with Mr. Brescher. Thank you very much for your invitation. I would be pleased to speak here uh, in Polish. Dzień dobry państwu. Good morning, everybody. My name is Krzysztof Breza. Krzysztof Breza. And I'm a Polish senator. I have been a senator. I was a, sen I was a member of the European Parliament for three mandates. And I was spied on using Pegasus this illegal
the speaker's microphone has has gone off. So this is a cyber weapon. Pegasus is a cyber weapon. It's an illegal device, and it means that you can steal data and photos and videos and conversations and all kinds of data from mobile phones. You can the uh, Pegasus software uh, can sweep up all information on one's mobile phone. And this surveillance, in my case, went on for a long time, up to October 2019. This was during electoral canvass for European Parliament and then a campaign for elections to the Polish Parliament. And the important thing is that I was a target when I was in charge of the campaign for the opposition party civic platform in 2019. Now, a Canadian NGO determined that there was Pegasus on my telephone. And during the election campaign, uh, on public TV campaigns, there was a campaign uh, to dirty my personal image, and this was uh, based on material that had been sucked up from my mobile phone by Pegasus. Uh, and this was designed to discredit the opposition whose campaign I was leading. This was a particularly bad experience to undergo such an awful experience, and that is to say, uh, to be spied upon by Pegasus. But I am very proud of being Polish. I am a patriot. And knowing that in Poland, which is so dear to my heart, that there are people who are using this kind of material to undermine democracy is a, a source of great concern to me. In 2015, we saw that mechanisms to defend democracy were gradually being dismantled, mechanisms which guard against totalitarianism. And uh, the prosecutor's office became politicized as, as a result of the, the Ministry of Justice and the prosecutor's office being merged. This was a constitutional division which was eliminated by the PIS party and the choice of judges, the appointment of judges in Poland is also um, an important matter. And the what I'm saying is that the activities of our courts was to, to some extent uh, prevented or ceased by what was undertaken. And there was no proper monitoring of our secret services. The public TV channels in Poland uh, have been turned into a governmental set of chains by the PIS party. It is now a chain which produces proper, uh, a TV channel which produces propaganda. What you see on those channels is propaganda. And having eliminated these mechanisms to protect uh, democracy, the media have been used against the opposition in Poland. And yet the sources of this illegal surveillance have never been determined. But thanks to the work of foreign experts, Amnesty International and others, we have been able to make progress. And the Pegasus surveillance situation and the attack and the undermining of free elections in Poland is the result of a scandalous misuse uh, and abuse of the Polish opposition. This is an, an attack on all Polish vo voters and we can see that there is a legal a moral and a political dimension to 
this affair, which is systemic in terms of politics, what is happening um, is an, an attempt to, uh, to eliminate me as a, as a politician. I'm seen as a, a, an awkward figure. And I was part of the two inquiry commissions looking into the special services and an, another of com commission, the first of the commissions revealed the fact that illegal interceptions were taking place, illegal phone tapping, and during the first mandate of the governing party PIS, 2005 to 2007, what was happening is that the, in addition, in 2015, the heads of the secret services were accused by the lower courts and it what prevented them going to prison was our president Andrzej Duda because the president forgave them their crimes he used the pres the opportunity of a presidential pardon. Other figures who have been affected are people like Donald Tusk. And what I have determined is that the prosecutor's office in Gdansk conducted an illegal open a legal case against me. Now, what I would like to state is that I have never personally committed a crime. What I am guilty of is being an awkward politician because I have often pointed to abuses of power in Poland. And let me give you an example of this. In 20, 2017, I revealed a colossal governmental case and it was determined that the prime minister and the government had granted themselves a bonus, a kind of second salary. And this was done without the Polish public being aware of it. And when I revealed this affair, naturally the popularity of those involved declined in the surveys this is the legal dimension therefore of what i am addressing today i'd like to underline this i've never committed a crime there's never been a case against me there has never been uh, an accusation against me and there's never been a, a, an issue which would lead to the my immunity being lifted. But because of the Pegasus spying, all these efforts uh, have been made against me. And this is probably something which has cost about 4 million euros. I am the, 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 the only a person who has been involved in a case involving Pegasus in Poland. But what I would like to say is that my surveillance was a result of another case underway which had nothing to do with me. This is a case which goes back five years. It was a case against my father, but I was never heard, not even as a witness, during that case and these activities against me in 2019 started on the basis of a pretext, a lie. When this case based on Pegasus was started, what we noticed was that the organizers of this surveillance via Pegasus already had 
information. They said they knew that the Pegasus operation was illegal and they they organized a leak, a media leak via the public TV channel, that is to say the governmental channel, and via mails, uh, uh, they They distributed mails which had been gathered from my telephone via Pegasus and sought to cause difficulties for me during this electoral campaign as a result of revealing these emails which had been gathered by Pegasus. At the same time, a court had been forced to, uh, to renew the surveillance operation but according to information at my disposal this court which had authorized the continuation of this surveillance had not been informed that pegasus was being used to conduct the surveillance in addition those behind the surveillance uh, started a hate campaign against me and members of my family during this electoral campaign period So the use of lies and the non-compliance with the ob objective nature of a prosecutor's work meant that the uh, local, the judicial authorities are no longer protecting citizens but destroying them. When it comes to the moral dimension now, we are all public and private individuals at the same time. We have our public activities and we have our private lives and the destruction of one's private life is one of the tools used by dictatorships this is something that that was very frequent uh, during the communist dictatorships before 1989 secret services interfered with our private lives invaded our private lives for six months and listened to our conversations, spied on our exchanges, and this requires reparation, this requires redress, not just legal redress, that is one point, but also moral redress, uh, because this should never have happened. But it took place because of the electoral campaign that I have mentioned, and using Pegasus, the do documents were stolen, which were used to falsify the situation and used as part of a hate campaign against me, but also against my father, who is mayor of Wrocław, and in a recent listing, my father was considered, was deemed to be the best mayor in Poland. However, Amnesty International has determined that my father was also the target of attacks. For instance, he received SMSs inviting him to inviting him to take part in electoral hustings, but these SMSs contained links. And if you clicked on those links, that allowed a virus to enter the telephone and cause turbulence. In addition, my mother, who is not a politician, she's a composer, we won't have time for everybody else to make their contributions if people ask questions. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, no problem. Okay. okay. So, uh, so we now call upon... Microphone for the chair. The chair cannot be interpreted. Okay, so better. Um, Mr. Um, the, our next speaker is Mrs. Uh, Reba. Thank you.
Okay, thank you. Good morning. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank the Council of Europe for your invitation and for giving me the opportunity to explain not only my case as a victim of Pegasus, and more specifically, my work as a vice president of the Inquiry Committee of the Pegasus and other spice wars in the European Parliament. Uh, despite the fact that Pegasus could be used for legitimate proposals, we are observing how there is an increasing number of cases, even in Europe, in which a spyware is used by national governments to spy on journalists, academics, activists, and on a democratic political opposition. For this reason, we have to be clear, we are addressing a European issue, a issue profoundly within the file of human, civil, political rights included and recognized in European treaties. In my case, as a victim, Citizens Lab, a Canadian laboratory specialized in digital espionage, has detected two attacks on my cell phone. Like myself, 64 people have been attacked, including the president of the Catalan government, Per Aragonés. What do we all have in common? All of us are Catalan people to work from different parts of the society such as political parties or NGOs for an independent Catalonia through democratic and pacific means. All of us represent a political movement that should be confronted at the ballot, of course, but never through repression or weapons of war like, Pe of war like Pegasus. Regarding my personal case as a victim, I knew that something was wrong because during one of the attacks, I was having a conversation with one of my assistants. And when we finished the call, he received another call with a recording of whole conversation we had just had. It was in this moment obvious that we were being spied on. Several things uh, were happening at the time in Catalonia, Spain and Europe. The first time that I was attacked was in June of 2019, just after become an MEP. At that time, we were discussing legal and political issues with my party, Esquerra Republicana, and with the lawyers on how we should proceed to defend the political rights of Uriol Junqueras, our party leader, and number one on our candidates list in European election. He was elected in this moment uh, uh, as an MEP with more than 1,200,000 votes. But he couldn't meet the legal formalities to collect it credentials because he was not allowed to leave the prison where he was being held in custody before trial for this involvement in the Catalan referendum of 2017. At the, at the time, we were also speaking to the former president of the European Parliament about the seat of Uriol Junqueras, and so the Spanish state also had access to those conversations. The second time I was attacked was in October of 2019, just after the sentence of the trial in which the member of the Catalan government, the former speaker of the Catalan Parliament, and the main leaders of the pro-independence civil organization were sentenced to between nine and 13 years. Those were really busy days when we started building the strategy to bring their cases before European justice, especially those of Uriol Junqueras as the leader of Esquerra and Raúl Robleva, who is my partner. They also had access to this information, obviously confidential conversations between me and the lawyers should be covered by professional privilege. As you can see, the Spanish state has a clear interest in knowing what our political and legal strategies are at very moment, and they will use any system at any cost to get this information. They do not care if it violates any kind of political rights, rule of law, or human rights. The question that we must ask ourselves is, can a state, a member of the European Union, carry on activities to spy, control, interfere, or influence 
the legitimate political action of individuals or of organized, uh, organized people, anyone with a minimum democratic sense should be absolutely clear on that. When we, as European political representatives, raise our eyes and observe what is happening in Europe, we see that there are more cases in countries like Poland, Hungary, Greece, etc. So we need to take an action quickly as European institutions. That is why there currently exists an inquiry committee in European Parliament. Something really extraordinary, considering that in the last 20 years, there have been only five committees of this type. In addition, the European Justice Commissioner, Didi Reinders, sent a letter of the governments of Hungary, Poland, Spain and Greece, requesting more information on the Pegasus revelations. Unfortunately, Spain is the only country that has not replied to the European Commissioner letter. I would like to say that despite the national interest that exists and the intention of the some delegation to cover up some of the espionage case, the inquiry committee is doing a very good job. Hearing victims, experts, <laughs> companies that are making these kinds of software and countries that they are buying them. Most of the groups uh, agree on the fact that there is a clear need to common EU standards regulating the use of the spyware by government bodies. So we need to work hard to conclude this committee with a proposal of common legal European framework. As the vice president representing Green Ziffa, I also defend the idea of a moratorium while we do not have, uh, we do not have this framework. And if you ask me personally uh, how this framework would have to be, I would say that we need a general ban on a spy world with very limited exceptions and only if all safe words are met, the Commission may consider lifting the ban for a country. Those exceptions, for example, uh, th those exceptions for a derogation of the general ban could be, for example, an imminent terrorist street or the prevention of a serious street of the public security of a member state. This general ban with very few exceptions, is crucial because we are talking about a very intrusive surveillance method that, as we could see very well in the case of Spain, but also in the rest of the cases, has effect in three dimensions. The first one, the, priva the, privacy, the privacy dimension. Somebody intrudes on your personal life and steals all you have your conversation with your family, the pictures with your children, the videos of your holidays, and personal things that, that you obviously don't want to share with anybody else. It also has a political dimension. It is hard to accept that your state, supposedly a fully democratic one, is acting against citizens, lawyers, journalists, and political representatives using illegal to tools and technologies allowed only in relation to terrorist or violence activities. And finally, it was an institutional dimension because it implies that deterioration of the rule of law and democratic principles. We are talking about violation of human rights and that is why all cases of abuse of a spyware have to be fully investigated and resolved immediately by the appropriate law enforcement, prosecutorial and judicial authorities. We will work to achieve and to ensure that under the excuse of the national security, not one single country is allowed to spy on their citizens, as is happening in countries that we in, the Europea, in Europe criticize very much, like in China. Finally, we will fight too hard to a free society and against those who would like to cover our collective life in a, into Big Brothers scenario in order to maintain the status quo. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, and now we have our third um, contributor is uh, Mr. Koukakis, who should be online from Greece. Mr. Koukakis, welcome. Good morning. 
Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes. Far away, far away. Thank you. We can hear you. Just about. Great. Uh, I would like to thank uh, the Council of Europe for its invitation. Uh, Excuse me. You must get closer to your microphone. Yes, can so we can. Is that better? Uh, right much now? better, yes. Yes. Okay. So, uh, good morning again. I would like to thank you for your invitation. Uh, I would like to stress that uh, the past years I have a close collaboration with the Council of Europe through Greco, it's a decorruption body, so I'm very familiar with your work. Uh, unfortunately, uh, today I will speak uh, to you, I'm speaking to you as a victim of um, the predator spyware. Um, and as you might know, my case run, is running now for more than uh, eight months. It, uh, it had been published in the um, domestic and in the national media. I have been twice targeted as a surveillance victim from the Greek government. First, through uh, the conventional, conventional channel of um, the Greek National Security Agency. And secondly, uh, through the Predator. So, uh, in order to take all the things for, from the start, uh, with, uh, during the 2020, myself, uh, as a journalist working for CNN in Greece and having affiliation with uh, CNBC and Financial Times, I was covering special uh, cases of uh, law amendments through the, from the Greek government, law amendments that facilitated the distinguished economic crime in Greece. For example, uh, the amendment of the penal code for the criminal breach of trust only for the bankers, the amendment of the anti-money laundering uh, law, which facilitated uh, 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 approximately 1 billion assets to be unfrozen and returning back to the criminals or the amendment of the tax code in order to prohibit to the prosecutors to prosecute directly the, the big tax evaders. Those were uh, reports that I made myself and Kerry Hope, the former uh, correspondent for Financial Times here in Greece, we are uh, reporting um, to the international uh, audience. So during that period of time, uh, especially in, uh, in um, the June of 2020, I have been uh, targeted from the National Security Agency of Greece, and there was other surveillance for approximately two months until the 12th of August of uh, 2020. Uh, I realized that because my mobile phone started acting uh, um, uh, in a bizarre way, meaning that the battery was running off rapidly, it was overheating, and uh, most importantly, when I was uh, calling someone, this person uh, was uh, directly getting the line and uh, there was no any ring in the meantime. So uh, this was a, a, a continue for more than uh, three weeks. Uh, it was very strange. I had uh, visited the, the maintenance store of my iPhone in order to, to see and change my battery, but the the problems were uh, still standing. Um, in the mid of July of 2020, I asked for one of my sources to, to see whether I was at the surveillance from the National Security Agency of Greece. This source came back to me after two weeks and uh, confirmed the fact that was at the surveillance. I didn't believe him at the very beginning and I asked him to provide some proofs about it. So at the beginning of, of August, uh, of 2020, he showed me specific transcripts of conversations that I had at the beginning of June, and that is, and it was more than profound the fact that I was under surveillance from national security reasons. Uh, immediately, I addressed and I filed a complaint to the cabinet authority and institutional authority here in Greece for the security of communication, asking to the cabinet authority to inquire why, uh, if, whether, and why I was uh, at the surveillance. The Greek legislation that was active for more than 27 years gave to this cabinet authority the ability to provide information to the victims, the targets of uh, surveillance for the fact that they were at the surveillance. That was um, uh, active that provision was active for 27 years. 
after I made the official claim to the Greek authority, uh, the government, six, approximately five months after that, amended the law of the Cabinet Authority and prohibited to the authority to provide any information to the victims or to the targets of, the, of, of uh, that have been under surveillance for national security reasons uh, for the fact that there have been other surveillance. That occurred at the March of 2021. So after my first the surveillance and after the incident that I have already described to you with the Covenant Authority for the Security of the Communication, during the summer of 2021, um, I have been infected uh, with the Predator spyware, a very intrusive spyware that is uh, acting like the Pegasus as the other speakers have already described. Uh, during the July of 2021, I had received a text message in my mobile phone uh, with uh, a link uh, that was relative with um, a banking story. And, and it was, um, I, I believe that was innocent. I click on it, so I have been infected. Uh, as the Citizen Lab of University of Toronto documented, the, my infection with the Predator's power was active for 10 weeks until the 24th of September of 2021. Um, so initially, we have my surveillance through the conventional uh, technology of the National Security Agency. And after I realize and I document this uh, surveillance, I have been targeted with the stealth uh, surveillance power predator and I have to admit that during that surveillance I didn't uh, realize uh, that I was under surveillance it was as I told you a stealth surveillance so um, I was very lucky because at the end of December of 2021 approximately one year ago the meta the mother company of Facebook uh, together with the citizen lab of University of Toronto uh, published two separate reports uh, and revealed the existence of the Predator's power. In the meta report, there were a specific reference to 42 uh, fake domains, links that have been created in order to um, infect uh, mobile phones with the Predator's power. Among those three links, there were three links that have to do with the uh, and Greece, inside.gr and uh, HellasJournal.com, three media outlets that I have active collaboration with, uh, with. I find that very strange and having already in mind the um, facts of my first surveillance from the NSA, uh, I get in touch with the Meta in order to ask them if they can provide additional information about this uh, spyware. The Meta brought me in touch with the Citizen Lab of the University of Toronto. The Citizen Lab ran a diagnostic control to my uh, mobile phone and documented my infection with the Predator's power. So uh, at that point, uh, I was the first uh, European uh, target with Predator that had been confirmed. Um, my case had been published in Greece during the April, and it had been covered by the national media too. But the Greek justice and the Greek government were denied the fact that they were among, uh, behind this um, surveillance. I was extremely lucky by the fact that the PEGA committee uh, of the European Parliament ran a diagnostic control to the U European parliamentarians' mobile phones, and among them it was Mr. Nikos Adroulakis. Mr. Nikos Adroulakis' phone had been um, um, uh, inquired by the Citizen Lab of the University of Toronto, and the University of Toronto fined to its uh, mobile device the same link that it had been used in order to uh, infect my phone. So um, that it was um, the, uh, the second, uh, Mr. Adroulakis became the second known uh, victim for, uh, of Predator, but in his case, because he didn't click the link, we had an attempt of infection and not a real infection. Uh, 
Mr. Nadulaki's case has been revealed in, at the end of July of 2022. And uh, instantly in Greece became known that at the same period that the, it had been infected, uh, that we have the attempt of infection of, through the predator, he was under surveillance from the Greek National Security Agency. He, Mr. Dulakis is the head of the third biggest political party in Greece. At the same time, he's a member of the European Parliament. So we have this correlation, which has been repeated. First, the surveillance through National Security Agency, and then the infection with the predator. It was a surveillance that is, uh, acts in a, in a double way. And that we were, in this way, through Mr. Adulakis' case, we were in position to document that the, uh, through this correlation, that behind the use of predator in Greece, uh, it, is the, it was the Greek National Security Agency. The last weeks, uh, the, the, uh, the, investigate, the investigation, investigator journalist here in Greece had revealed additional facts and data that shows that members of the Hellenic police, they have been transferred to the National Security Agency and it was the users of the predator's power uh, which had infected uh, dozens of targets here in Greece. Um, uh, this is uh, my initial uh, reference about all the SPACs and I'm, I'm at your disposal in order to provide any additional uh, information on this case. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now, uh, it's the opportunity for people to ask uh, questions. I hope they're going to be questions rather than statements. Um, yes, Mr. Nikolaski. Uh, thank you. Uh, as we've been as a country facing with something similar, uh, personally, I've uh, went in public that myself as deputy president of the opposition and as well, the leader of the opposition are under surveillance in the past period. I would like just to ask the victims uh, in quotes here, whether they had physical as well surveillance, illegal physical surveillance, meaning uh, interesting people going behind them or ahead of them and following their uh, physical movement, or it was only Pegasus used to uh, surveil their their life and their communication. Thank you. Thank you now, Mr. Lesenka. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Uh, just first of all, thanks to the guests just for the interventions, because it is very useful. And uh, I specifically understand uh, that uh, the same situation was directly with me in uh, 2012 when, during the Yanukovych's regime. And uh, by the way, preparing to that hearing, I, I knew that the Israeli company who developed the Pegasus, they developed it in 2011. So uh, totally the same as you described. The, the telephone was hacked, the email was hacked, everything was published. Uh, I received, uh, during the Maidan, I received thousands of similar SMS on my phone number, thousands a day. So just with the same, please don't go to Maidan, don't help Timoshenko, and so on, and so on, and so on, and so on. So uh, the question is whether you know uh, the examples of usage of Pegasus before 2020, because you described the situation starting from 2020, and the Pegasus was developed in 2011. So that's nine years of difference uh, and uh, nobody knows what had happened during these nine days maybe all of us were under the supervision of that of that uh, spyware and that's the question uh, and once more thank you for for your for your description because i understand that maybe i don't want to be the first european politician who was hacked by that but uh, maybe that was the situation because uh, totally the same you described was in ukraine when I was defending Madame Timoshenko, who was the uh, oppositional leader to then pro-Russian President Yanukovych, and I was her defense lawyer. So totally the same. So the question is whether you've heard about the situations when the Pegasus or the similar spyware was used before 2020, especially starting from 2011. Thank you. Thank you, President. I have a few, few questions for um the the people here um in 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 questions on the catalan gate uh which was the answer of spain when catalan gate came to light uh spain also has informed that 18 out of 65 people were spied 
under judicial authorization. Have you seen these authorizations? It means that the other 47 were spied illegally. Can citizens targeted by spyware, such as Pegasus, access to the data extracted from their personal devices in any sort of investigation? Has the Spanish government contacted those people or you or given them any information regarding the use of spyware on them? And uh, questions on the inquiry committee uh, on Pegasus that you are vice president. Uh, I have two, two questions. Uh, last November, uh, the European Parliament's inquiry committee on Pegasus, which, of which you are the vice president, celebrated a hearing about the Spanish case. Are the member states and the main political groups governing them collaborating with the committee, with the investigation? Do you think it was useful for clarifying the, sp the espionage scandal in Spain? And um, why the inquiry committee has not done a mission to Spain yet? And the last one, the coordinator of the EPP in the inquiry, inquiry committee uh, is the former Spanish interior minister, Juan Ignacio Zoido. During his term of office in charge of the secret services, it has been proven that there were infections. Do you think that there are conflicts of interest with his role inside the inquiry committee? Thank you, President. And then um, Alex Poche. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, First, first of all, uh, thank you, Peter. Uh, once again, you are showing uh, that you are taking a very difficult uh, subject, and uh, thank you very much. Uh, I, I think uh, this is very, very important uh, uh, topic and report. We have something here like five times Watergate, because this is not only to hear and to use the information, what uh, Mr. Breza witnesses, but uh, after to use this information to uh, change everything what was in his uh, telephone, to leak this defamation and combine information to the public media, in order to hit the, op the opposition leader during the campaign. This is five time Watergate. But it's not limited to this. I would like, Madam Brazer, a few words. How the system, legal system, the prosecutor office, and, uh, and, uh, uh, and uh, how the judges in their case were uh, appointed. That my question. Ms. Casamalti. Thank you. Um, thank you very much for this uh, hearing. As uh, you know, uh, in Greece we have a major uh, scandal. Um, and um, I would like to know, um, I would like to make known that the you know that we have a confirmed uh, export of the predator uh, surveillance uh, spyware uh, to Sudan by the Greek uh, Foreign uh, Ministry. And according to the bills of Indelexa, the company which uh, runs the, the, the product, there are other exports to uh, third states. Uh, today, it was made known uh, by the Documento uh, News uh, that uh, there, is, um, uh, uh, th there is proof and there is, that uh, the, um, uh, all these decisions were carbon copied to the, the diplomatic office of the Prime Minister, Kyriakos Mitsotakis. Um, I, I would like this to make to, 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 be, to be known here for your, uh, Ms. Riba, for, uh, for your notification. And um, also to tell you that uh, the, the law that was recently passed didn't address 
any of the issues that were raised by uh, by, uh, by by the PEGA committee. And uh, I would like you please to tell me, to tell us, uh, what are uh, the remarks that uh, you have to make on uh, the on your visit uh, to to Greece regarding uh, this uh, this scandalous case that undermines. Uh, our political uh, life and uh, the quality of democracy in Greece uh, by this uh, uh, government regime, as we call it, uh, that not in any case does not uh, resembles or represents the quality of democracy and of Greek people uh, after Hunda. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Hispan. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, uh, first of all, I want to congratulate uh, Peter and his and his work. It's very it's very necessary, and I think uh, we need it. Because, uh, but but the question, the, the spy uh, of, of 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 governments to the, to 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 public uh, to journalists, politicians, and so on, we can't afford abort that in a way a frivolous way or journalistic way, because we are also talking about the security of the states in a moment that, for example, Russia uh, is interfering in our democracies. And it's very important because what's the testimony of the, of the, of the Spanish woman that is here, Mrs. Mrs. Riva, uh, yesterday if we saw uh, the France, uh, the France Sank program, uh, a, a program about the interference of Russia inside of democracy, a, a member of, 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 of Catalan independentist group say openly that they were collaborating with Russia uh, in the coup d'etat that Spain suffering in 2017. It was yesterday in a, in a program here in, in, the, in the French television, the relationship with the Catalan independence and Russia. So it's very, a very complex uh, situation. Of course, uh, uh, here the substantive is the illegal uh, uh, espionage. And the adjective is Pegasus because there have been a lot of different programs. For example, I'm, I'm sure that Mrs. Mrs. Riva know what is Hacking Team and Galileo. Yes, yes. Did the, did the Catalan uh, police, when you were in government, use and be in contact with, the Itali uh, with an Italian sp uh, spy program that the name was uh, Hacking Team and Galileo? Did they use it then? Did, they, did the uh, Catalan police try to destroy all the all the proofs and the Spanish police find them because you have spy uh, the people. Uh, wait, wait a minute. I have other 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 question because it's it's very complex. It's very complex. Did the Spanish did the Spanish uh, uh, spy a uh, woman uh, went to the went to the to the parliament and speak openly uh, to all the uh, speaker about what's happen what what has happening with Pegasus in Spain? Because your, your speaker were in this commission. She went down. Mr. Soido was not in charge of the spies in, uh, when he, wa uh, he was minister. And the, and, the, and the last question. Why, if you have been spy, your party is supporting the government that is spying you? You have elected the president that is spying you? And you have, and you have passed and, and, and approved all the, all the laws to control the judges and to put the judges in jail as the Polish uh, uh, person has, has said, uh, because in Spain it's happening the same. Why do you support the government that you are accusing of spying you? And the, and the last question, Mr. Oczyk, we must also talk about the, the, Toronto, the Toronto laboratory, because there are a lot of holes and a lot of people who question this laboratory and, and all the proof. So the, the investigation, wait a minute, it's, it's, very, it's very important. It's very, yes. Okay. The microphone with the chair, please, who cannot be interpreted. The... Thank you. Mr. Kleinvash. Thank you so much, Mr. President. <clears throat> Thank you for this hearing. I have a question um, relating to what Mr. Breja said about the altering of information that was given to the public uh, media outlets. And did you find, did any of you find information on your phones altered or deleted or added? So there was data manipulation on the devices. That would be very interesting if you could expand on that a little more um, in your answer. And the second question, how far reaching was the attempt? Did you find attempts on your computers, on your uh, wife's devices, uh, on your uh, assistance devices, for instance? And um, that would be very interesting to see. Thank you.
Thank you, Mr. Chair. Alexander is very right to say that uh, uh, this scandal is equivalent to many water gates. In Greece, uh, we had uh, dozens of uh, surveillance of uh, politicians, uh, journalists, uh, members of the opposition, uh, me members of the government. And maybe what is particular in Greece is that in many of these cases, there is a proven complementarity of uh, uh, surveillance by the secret services and uh, the illegal surveillance by uh, the, the predator. So what I would like to ask uh, Mr. Koukakis is that uh, given this uh, combination of uh, legal, and legal and illegal surveillance, uh, if he has any doubts about uh, the knowledge <coughs> and the involvement of the Greek prime minister in this uh, surveillance. And I would like also to congratulate uh, Peter and also propose to him a fact-finding mission in these countries involved, especially in Greece. I think that uh, it would be necessary to complement uh, his knowledge on the facts. <laughs> Mr. Kuletian. Yes, uh, thank you, Chair. First of all, um, to Peter Omtsig. Uh, Peter, you have a complex, delicate, complicated report in front of you to draw. So uh, I just simply want to express a clear political uh, democratic support for you to finalize uh, properly this report. Secondly, uh, <clears throat> we are not naive. As politicians, we know that uh, for many, many years, uh, undemocratic things happened in democratic uh, regimes when, first of all, many years monitoring the phone calls and the European Court of Human Rights has a quite substantial uh, jurisprudence on that, for instance, the case of Cruislan. This is different. This is technology, this is new technology, this is uh, spying and so on. So my questions are the following one. The first addressed uh, to Mr. Uh, Koukakis. Uh, you have mentioned uh, uh, receiving uh, several links. Uh, it, they were uh, sent uh, through SMS, text, uh, WhatsApp or emails. Uh, secondly, for uh, Mr. Uh, uh, um, Christoph uh, Breja, you didn't mention how you got the, the feedback that you are a subject of uh, being uh, hacked. It's important in practical terms. We, we have heard from the other distinguished speakers how it uh, happened. I'm putting the question because also myself, I have some uh, serious suspicions, not proofs, but during the years for those colleagues that were member, are member of the monitoring committee, you might remember that I was extremely critical on a bad practice in my country, in Romania, starting with 2009, on a classified protocol concluded by the internal intelligence with uh, prosecutors and uh, giving access to very undemocratic things that were recognized after many years and dismissed by the new head of the intelligence. For instance, in my case, I saw a number of uh, years... Ten, se ten seconds, please, Mr. Chairman that e when opening the email, all my emails were not fresh. They were already read it. So uh, suspicious. So I'm interested uh, to get the practical uh, uh, modalities where you have seen uh, how you have ha had uh, received the hackers. Thank you. Mr. Catalan. Oui. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Uh, uh, je tiens félicitations à leur rapport. Thank you very much. I'd like to congratulate Peter on this excellent work and thank you for bringing together these witnesses of uh, people who have been victims. I'd like to look at the question of uh, Pegasus, which has been used by states, not necessarily con against the opposition. There's an international uh, dimension. If you look at France, for instance, there are very strong suspicions that dozens of, of polit politicians, economists and uh, journalists uh, in, in Morocco have been listened to via Pegasus. And this is particularly important when it comes to the context of international relations because Morocco is a friendly country for France. As a number of uh, proactive lobbies uh, in my chamber have, have stated that we shouldn't be talking about this. So I'd like to ask Mrs. Reba whether this international uh, dimension uh, of uh, tapping via Pegasus is, is something that's been taken up by your commission. Thank you. Stylianidis. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Chair. <coughs> <coughs> 
<laughs> Thank you, Chair. Uh, as a point of order, I have a question whether we have the possibility to exchange the views on, on the issue or there will be only question and answers. Uh, if there will be an exchange of views, the question is when we will start the exchange of views because in 20 minutes we should finish that issue. Thank you. I, I'm in charge and uh, when everybody's asked a question and wants to, then I shall ask people to respond. Mr. Stinnett. First, I would like to thank you, uh, Peter, for, and congratulate him. Uh, he belongs to our political group, and I'm very proud for his job. Uh, question to everybody. Uh, do you recognize that the most serious problem is the concentration of data and power in the hands of uh, international and maybe pri private softwares which are uh, functioning out of the rule of law? This is the first question. The second question is to Mr. Koukakis. Uh, the Greek government uh, said that uh, uh, didn't use uh, predators. Uh, do you trust the Greek justice, which is uh, working now about the process after the initiative of the government? And third question, do you believe that uh, the new law initiative of the government, Mitsotakis, is to the right direction? Do you encourage uh, the Council of Europe to create some proposals to the member states to create new laws about uh, the new situations we live? Thank you. So Edward Lee. Uh, you're taking you're, you're taking up valuable time. If you wish to make yourself unpopular, carry on. Okay. <laughs> That's not the problem of that. But yeah, I understand that you are in charge. But with, with all my due respect to you, my question was whether it will be the exchange of views or only the question and answers. Thank you. I, I want to receive the answer on that. Thank you. You, you. you know that this is a hearing, and that the uh, this is feeding into the report, the rapporteur will come back after the, this hearing with the, hopefully, the benefit of the answers to some of the questions that have been asked and other questions that haven't been answered. He will come back and be, when we consider his final uh, report, we'll have a chance to have a proper length discussion and anybody who's got any queries or suggestions, they'll be able to, to make them then. But we, we are time limited uh, today and that's but I think it's important that people who have come, made the effort to come to this committee should be able to ask a question. And I, I think it's important that, that that question should be answered. So that's what I'm going to try, uh, how I'm going to try and run uh, the, the, the committee uh, today. And uh, so I'm now going to call Sir Edward Lee. Um, I quite understand why our witnesses don't like either the Spanish government or the Conservative Polish government or the Greek government, anything else. That's their, that's their right. What I'm struggling with is what proof we've had. We've had various assertions about noises, noises on mobile phones, batteries running out. My battery often runs out because uh, I don't charge it enough. I leave it too long on the phone. What we want, as my friend Mr. Kleinwachter asked, is actual proof. Uh, if this was a sustained uh, operation by governments, you would have proof on your laptop, on your mobile phone, actually text being changed. And that's what we need, not vague assertions because we understand you don't like the governments, but that isn't, uh, that isn't a cause. That doesn't prove that they're actually listening onto your mobile phones. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Thank you, Chair. I just wanted to say that the relations mentioned by my French colleague that in the same revelations uh, uh, there was the question of a revelation of surveillance of the royal family and royal security. I just wanted to raise that issue. Thank you very much. Now I think we're now going. We, we, we haven't got time for second rounds. I'm afraid we're going to we're going to ask um, it will our, be a second round, uh, Mr. President. Uh, uh, those who given evidence. It, it to... will not be a second round. Just uh, that my question about uh, the information regarding the uh, the information that the, the Prime Minister of Greece uh, had. Uh, so that means that uh, there is um, one centre of uh, uh, administration of the predator, and of uh, and, and by knowing that uh, the prime minister in Greece is the head of the national uh, intelligence office, uh, th the question that I uh, uh, that I refer to Ms. Riba is also to Mr. Kukakis. Thank you. Thank you. We're now going to go ask our experts to respond in reverse order. So I'm going to ask Mr. Koukakis, uh, first of all, please, to respond to the questions that have been asked of you and, and try and keep it brief, please.
Okay, his, his, I'm afraid the spyware has obviously operated effectively against him. Now, um, who is, who is, uh, so Ms. Reva, would you like to respond, please? How many minutes we have? Because well, we have a lot of questions in front of us. We're, we're, okay. We're relying on the quality of the answers. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, I try to answer all the questions. Um, first of all, if if there are some physical movements or there are some another force, I I'm not sure on that. Uh, uh, but it's true that science twenty. 17 in in Catalonia was a lot of movements for the police to take care to spy all the movements of our parties and it's true that sometimes you feel that there are some cars or some people who are around you every day and but I never ask if they are police for example um, about all the scandals and I think there are something in all the questions uh, that we have to to take a look. I think we are in front of a really big, big scandal, and we only are seeing a really a few part of them. For example, the case of Greece is one of them. Uh, we see in the beginning three cases, and now we are, I don't know the number exactly, but perhaps are 15, and perhaps in the same months we have more in front of us. Uh, we know, because NSO explained us, that most of the governments in Europe have in this case, Pegasus programs, but there are more programs, we know it, and uh, uh, all exactly Germany thing they say that have it. The problem that we have in front of us is we are using these programs that creates like a, like a weapon for the war, an NSAO. It's a big uh, enterprise who make weapons uh, to spy our citizens, students in Poland, if I'm not mistaken, or political opposition. And we, like an uh, uh, European institution, we have a really big job in front of us to decide to negotiate what we want to do with all these uh, weapons that our member states have it and using. Another thing that we can show in all these questions is that we have another problem because all of us came from different parties. All of us came from different uh, political um, groups. And in this case of Pegasus, or in this case of the spy war, we saw that some of them are victims in one member state, and in other member state are the perpetrators. And we have to decide all together what we have to do, not only in the case of member state, we want to do with our democracy in Europe. And this is one of the big problems or, or that, that we, the biggest stones that we say in Spanish, that we have in front of us. We are the same in some times, but we have to decide something. We cannot be 10 years more in front of us with the situation that our citizens, our NGOs, our uh, open activists are spying for the government. This is one of the reflections I wanted to say. In the case of Spain, one of the questions was about these 18 that there are in the media that the Spanish government say that there are 18 cases that are legal. They say that there are a judge who's seeing that for, for spying these cases. We never saw in the inquiry committee these, uh, these legal papers. We never saw it. But in any case, I, I, don't, I cannot imagine in any case when a judge uh, for example, accept that the spy me was spy the president of the Catalonia. In my case, for example, the two the two moments that they spy me, I was an MEP. I have total immunity in the European Parliament. If somebody wants to spy me or somebody wants something for me, uh, can do it, but can ask for the European Parliament to take out my immunity and then ask for all the questions that they want. I mean, or for example, the lawyers, I think there are not in Europe any, any member state that you can spy the lawyers legally. This is impossible, sorry. There are no possible of that. Uh, about the, is the Spanish government are collaborating with us? Uh, I think there are a, 
a common things in all the member states and in all and other places in, in the world, for example, uh, in Mexico, in, in and other countries, that the first reaction of the member states is say, no, we never spy. After a week, they say, no, we have the program. And after that, say, yes, perhaps we use it. No, uh, and, and it's something that repeats in all the member states, but never, never in the end, we have a transparency on that. And I think this is important. We have to talk more about transparency in two things. For the victims, because if you are a terrorist, imagine that some of them are a terrorist, you have the right to know which information they have, where is this information, and for which case are, are spying you, for which case they are looking you. In these three things, in any case, in Poland, Hungary, Greece, in Spain, we don't have this answer. I don't know who has my information, uh, where is my information, and for which case are this information. And, and another thing of the transparency is for the money. We are the grants of the public money. And our member, our governments are using a lot of public money to buy and to use these programs. And this is something that we have to answer and we have to take care in our reports in all the places that we are taking a look. About the coordinator of, th oh, okay. Uh, mm, Anything yeah? else? One, one more point. One, one more point, point. Uh, perhaps answer, yeah, perhaps answer. Uh, I think, yeah, I try to answer you. Uh, I think I can to confirm that the Catalan government never have contact with Russia, never. And my party now are in the Catalan, uh, is the Catalan government in this case. Uh, and I think we, you, we cannot say the same with the extreme right, that yes, you are government, you have a government with the box in Spain. That means that we never, never have contact the Catalan government with in Russia. And the, um, about Greece, we have this mission. We have the really problems in Greece uh, with, like the others, President, Poland and Hungary. There are more more questions. <laughs> I take the importance of them. We're now going to get back to um, Mr. Kukakis, who's back online. Mr. Kukakis. Yes, I. It is not. We do not. We do not have some screws here which can require people who are asked questions to respond to them. But what we can do. Please, but Mr. What, we, what we can Mr. do. What we can about the police. What the we, police what we, she, hasn't, hasn't you, will you shut up, please? What we can do is we can make comments upon the fact that questions were asked and they weren't answered. We can raise those with the rapporteur and, and so on. But what we can't do is we can't force somebody um, to answer a question. Um, and that's, that's, that's the nature of democracy. But what I am going to do is going to try and ask Mr. Kukakis which of the questions that were put to him he would like to answer. So Mr. Kukakis, please. Uh, thank you again for giving me for giving me the floor. Can you please hear me? Can you hear me? We can hear you. Yes. Speak, Speak loudly, so, if possible. Uh, okay. In order to answer your questions, um, first, I didn't detect a data manipulation in mobile phone, in my mobile phone. And I have not found that there has been any attempt to infect my other electronic devices. Okay, second, a link, just one link was sent to me on July 12 uh, of uh, 2021 as a regular text message on mobile. Through this link, I was infected with a predator's power. Okay, um, secondly, I have no doubt that the Greek prime minister was uh, involved and in, uh, fully aware of the use of predator. And let me clarify that the first thing that the Greek Prime Minister did when he was elected back in July 2019, it was to take the Greek National Security Agency under his portfolio. And uh, uh, four, 
let me stress uh, something that had already been be discussed uh, in your committee. Greece, and I would like to have your attention, Greece became the first European country that facilitated the proliferation of the predator's power. Uh, as the Greek Ministry of Foreign Affairs uh, permits the, expo the export of the predator, giving in the Alexa, as the New York Times revealed three days ago, a permission in order to export the um, spyware to um, the Madagascar. And we have another concrete information that had been uh, sold to the militia of Sudan. So Greece had become a proliferation center of illegal spyware. And you have to take that um, uh, uh, under consideration. Uh, in order to respond to Mr. Vripidis uh, Stylianidis, yes, I have the faith that the Greek justice will be able to find um, uh, who were behind the illegal surveillance and the use of predator. I deeply believe that the, already the investigator, investigator journalists and, and uh, have provided um, valuable information to the Greek uh, prosecutors, and they will help him uh, help them in order to put light in, in this case. Uh, about uh, your question regarding the new bill, if it is in the right direction, uh, unfortunately, the new bill hides the government's responsibility. Indicatively, uh, it provides that uh, prosecutors who order surveillance for national security reasons are not obligated to justify their decision. And this, of course, is a big uh, hit on the rule of law. Uh, imagine no one will be able to know what their decision was based on. This is crucial. Uh, the same law, as you know, Mr. Stylianidis, is extremely unfair uh, to the victims like me, who to those who have been monitored by the National Intelligence Service, as it provides and stipulates that the targets will only be able to uh, and not be known about their surveillance three years after the conclusion of the surveillance, and only if the prosecutors who order initially the surveillance give their approval. So I don't believe that this is constitutional and is not, of course, in line with the European Court of Human Rights um, uh, provisions. Um, I would like to thank you again for, uh, for giving me the floor and the chance in order to, um, uh, to speak to your body. I would like to say that I fully um, I agree with what Ms. Mrs. Ribas highlighted about the three dimensions, privacy, political and institutional dimensions she referred to. And uh, if you need um, a proposal for me about the, the future legislation and regulation, I believe that uh, the new technology, uh, it is um, it show us the way, of course, uh, the surveillance power are, 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 are here to stay, and we cannot prohibit their existence. What we can do is to regulate them in a very uh, uh, strict way. And uh, let me set an example. For example, we can, um, we can uh, provide that the regulators have to uh, be fully uh, in knowledge uh, when a company that merchants uh, a spyware uh, sold its, uh, its power, who will be the end user of the product? So if we can monitor in a efficient way who is the final user of the spyware, then we can be in a position to, to know who uh, infected who with um, the spyware. So, thank, you, thank you very much for that point, and, and, and I'm sure that the rapporteur will take that on board. Okay, your help. Now we've got uh, Mr. Bridger quickly. Thank you very much. As to whether I was physically surveyed, what I know is that I was attacked by Pegasus, but at the same time, in parallel, 
I was subject to entirely traditional surveillance. My telephone was hacked and I was literally physically followed. You have put a question about Citizen Lab. The result of Citizen Lab's investigation was reconfirmed by Amnesty International's analysts. But another confirmation is that the contents of my two old phones was published. The contents was published on public TV, uh, but falsified, tampered with. And the, tele the public TV clearly indicated what the source was of these falsified documents, and that this came from a trial which took place in a court in Gdansk. But the text messages were only in my telephone, because text messages are not kept by telephone operators. And my telephone was never used as evidence in a trial, and therefore the only way to have had access to this data was to have stolen it from my mobile phone. But in fact, the president of the PIS party in power confirmed in an interview that Pegasus had been used against me. And we this is a demonstration uh, that the proper division of powers has not been respected in Poland, that the division of powers between the executive and the courts had been simply eliminated. That is to say, we have members of the government putting opposition politicians under surveillance. Now, I have no means uh, of redress. My lawyer and I have lodged a request for damages in a civil case because this is the only means that we have currently at our disposal in order uh, to seek to uphold my rights. Uh, the prosecutor's office is simply closing its eyes to our problem. May I reiterate at this stage that when this hate campaign was started against me, there were also threats of kidnapping my children. And the effect of the hate campaign against us was, as you can imagine. And the paradox is that the police guaranteed us personal protection. So the whole situation was really quite anomalous. And this, there was this hate campaign against us, but given the escalation that this led to, the same authorities proposed a protection. Okay, okay, thank, you, I, thank, you, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now, before I get, I'm going to, I'm going to ask Peter Object to respond. But before that, uh, Mr. Karidis from Greece uh, arrived uh, very late because uh, he was held up in the airport in Munich. He would have liked to have been able to ask a question. I'm going to ask him now to make the point he would have liked to have made, because he didn't hear the evidence, and so that Peter Omchik can take it on board when he uh, takes his report. So, Mr. Karidis, what is the question you would like to have had answered? Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman, for your generosity and kindness. It's true that I got held up in Munich for 12 hours in the airport and I lost my suitcase. That's why my casual appearance this morning. Uh, I wanted to be with you, obviously, very, very, very much because this is very important. And I did listen to the discussion through the phone, thank God. So I want to move it a step further. Uh, and uh, if I were able to ask a question and make a comment, that would be, uh, Mr. Koukakis has been a victim, a victim of a terrible uh, um, uh, 
offense against his privacy, no doubt about that. But uh, uh, Mr. Koukakis is a journalist, um, but not a political journalist. He does not cover politics. He covers uh, finances, financial things between corporations. Better. Better. Eh? Right, right. So I wonder what makes him so... No, no, it's fine. I wonder what makes him so convinced that behind this uh, uh, offense to his privacy lie uh, political interests, including the Greek prime minister, and not private interests, uh, and corporations that he has been uh, covering and uh, reporting about. What I'm trying to say here is to the rapporteur, that uh, this situation uh, has many faults, predator. It can be used by private interests, it can be used by uh, political interests, it can be used by uh, state agencies infiltrated by private interests, and so on and so forth. So one needs to be very careful when assigning responsibility. And finally, the comment. I find it a bit amusing, amusing uh, to give to accuse the Greek law for the three-year term when the Netherlands, the country of uh, my esteemed, uh, our esteemed rapporteur, has a five-year limit, even further than the Greek, and uh, Britain, uh, the country of our esteemed uh, chairperson, or Spain, uh, does not allow the revelation at all, even after many, 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 many years. So, uh, before going into this discussion about the law and the Greek and the that and that, one needs to be very careful and have uh, the comparative framework in mind. But I would insist on the point of politics and private interests. Obviously, as legislators, we need to legislate against both and be very careful. But before making this kind of grandiose statement, as some colleagues of the opposition from my country made, uh, one needs, and Mr. Koukakis uh, uh, concurred, one needs to be careful. Thank you very much for your generosity. Th thank you very much. Peter, Peter Amjik. Mr. Chair, I must give him one moment. I'm not going to give any more time. It is again, just, I, I'm, not, I'm yes. not going to give any more time because we've got max, a maximum of three or four minutes before we've, we're yeah, already running. We are, we, are all, of the term we are equality. already... You are aware of the term equality of We arms. are already are running allowed, late. Are we are a, already allowed, running you late. You are allowed a comment, you, Mr. You, we are already running late. Are, and I'm going are to, spending I, now we are, the we are the already the running committee. late. And there's no point... If you don't show any respect for the chair, then I, I have it, I think... You should also within respect my, the procedure, it, Mr. Chair. I, if, if you don't show any respect to the chair, I have it within my power to order that you be removed from this committee. I don't wish to take that power. Um, and, and so I'm going to call Mr. Omchik to respond to this Mr. debate. Chair, I have Mr. a point Omchik. of order. A point Mr. Of order. I have a point of order. No, we'll, we'll, I have a point of order. You, your point of order is not accepted because you you're, not trying to, it. you're trying to wreck this meeting. No, no, Mr. no. Mr. No, no. You are. You're selfish. And you're trying to wreck this no. meeting. What okay, are you saying, Mr. Mr. Chair? A point of order, Mr. Um, Chair. Mr. Object. A point of order, Mr. Chair. Well, okay, point of order. The point of order is that uh, you are not chairing. Wow. This, you are not presiding at this meeting with fairness and having in mind the quality of arms. Okay. My comment. Okay. I, I, I take that as a motion of no confidence in the chair. All those in favour of voting in, for no confidence in the chair. No, I, have show. Not, I have not put uh, such a motion. So you must stop to try to put uh, other words in my mouth. The, what I would like really to say, it's uh, 20 seconds of your time at the time of the... Uh, object to respond. Thank you very much. And um, I'm sorry for asking, for having asked for this meeting to be an open meeting to the public, because I don't think this is something I would like to show. It does show the huge interest here. And thank you very much for the three people who have been eavesdropped. And I'm sorry to all three of you for some members 
not asking questions on the eavesdropping, but putting slur on you. And I'm actually pretty annoyed with some members here, I can tell you, because I would have loved to have a discussion what it means to be eavesdropped by a government, what the limits would be on the which a government could use spy on its politicians and on its um, journalists. And I hope we can have that discussion in this, in this meeting. Let me be totally clear. There has been a lot of eavesdropping, and I'll, to my British colleagues, I'll show you the proofs that are here. To put that in doubt is just utter ridiculous. And put it that way. And to my Spanish colleague, I would like to say, we had to throw one of your party members who was president of the assembly out because he was on a plane of the Russian president visiting President Assad. So the first thing you accuse someone else of is to be a Russian asset. I would like to have factual questions here, Mr. Chairman. Factual questions to have a discussion about what human rights are and when we should use this stuff. Maybe it's fit in certain circumstances. If there is a real threat to the state, or if there is something like terrorism, you may want to think about using Pegasus. But you may not really want to use it, use it against your political opponent. And I would like our three guests, if they feel fit, to answer in writing to some of the questions mm -hmm. they would like to answer to. And also to tell us what help they've had from the authorities in actually getting redress. Did Ms. Reba get any help from the European Parliament in defending her parliamentary immunity? Did Ms. Brescia, and for those of you who are interested in how the Polish um, uh, system is working, I'm also rapporteur on Poland and the Rule of Law and the Monitoring Committee, so I have a sort of double role here. And there is an issue here with the Rule of Law in Poland, let me put that quite clearly. So getting redress from the Polish government in the Polish courts is extremely difficult, to put it mildly. So can you please, not now, but maybe later, and the same for, Ms. for our Greek colleague, give us some idea about how the procedures were when you first started complaining about it. And to our colleagues here, please, I am free to receive any letters from you about your part and your part of the story about what you think should happen. I would also suggest, however, that within your own parliaments, and I'm doing that in the Dutch parliament, you will ask questions on whether your own government has been using this or similar programs. Because let me put it clearly, there are three countries here, and I understand why some Spanish or some Greek government MPs would feel a bit accused, because there are, there are more countries which you could invite here. There's no doubt about that. No doubt about that. But please tell me what's happening in your country so we can write this report. Because put this in, in, in context. If you have read the book by George Orwell, 1984, you had to switch on your television to talk to your government. Here it's your government eavesdropping in it without you knowing it 24 hours, seven days a week. That is a totally different story. And to make it one, and there I have to say right to my Greek colleague, I find it a bit easy to deflect because we also know that, that the same software has been found on the mobile phone of the Greek leader of the opposition. And I know there are lots of things to be said about the Greek socialist parties. If you want to, you can have a different story there today. <laughs> There's no problem. Yeah? Especially, these Especially these days you can. But I don't think it's been a non-governmental actor um, spying on the Greek head of the opposition. Yeah. So let that be very clear. But there is a, an issue I will explore, and that is at least we can control on our governments. We're elected MPs. But this stuff in the hand of non-state actors may be even more dangerous. And I will include that in my report because the non-state actor issue is a real issue if you start legislating about this, if someone else is using it. The socialist is not here to ask him questions. It's Mr. Dukakis who is here to ask questions. So that's why I asked this question. <laughs> yes, and, 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 and please do send me some comments um, um, b b by any means. Um, I, I know we had Mr. Dukakis, and I would, I would have loved the leader of your Social Democratic Party. He was 
unable to come for um, private reasons. And they were actually very valid, I can tell you. Um, so thank you very much again. And if you have a last comment, and otherwise it has to be in writing because we're running over 15 minutes. And I think the chair is um, one thing for another topic, if I look at his face. <laughs> I'm very happy to talk about this topic and, and, and what I can say is that following this discussion and I think about tw we've had about 20 interventions so it just shows how important uh, you the members of the committee uh, take this I, I'm going to ask the, 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 the chairman of the, of the committee to ensure that when this report comes back there's more than sufficient time for everybody to be able to put their points because obviously it's been frustrating that we've only had an hour and a half this morning to discuss uh, the, these issues with these important uh, witnesses. Peter. Well, I mean, um, looking that so many people made points here and uh, these points are not, we're not 100% just at the, our guests, I would suggest we have a free discussion of half an hour in the January session so that anyone can make points and I can take them on board before I write the memo. <laughs> yeah, is writing the memo, we know how, how things are going, because that would make life a bit easier and it makes me, it, it, it enables me to take points on board before uh, instead of afterwards. So um, if the chair would take that decision, he's the chair right now, then we can put it on the uh, January agenda on the Monday or the Tuesday, because I'm only there on the Monday or the Tuesday. Uh, we'll, we'll we'll have to look at the the agenda, but if 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 we can achieve that, is, would people like to to, to do that fulfil that suggestion? Yes. Yep. Okay. Uh, we'll see what we can do for you. Can I also thank our uh, witnesses for coming along and enlivening our discussion? Uh, thank you very much indeed. We now move on. It's now coming up for quarter past eleven. Uh, we now I think we've got to go straight on to the next um, topic. Okay, there's a, um, fi a five, five minute five break. Minutes, five minutes. Five break. minute break to clear the air. Okay.